People are stuck in a state of normalcy bias. They must protect their belief system at all costs. There will be no shattering of paradigms. There will be no waking up. There will only be weakness. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. It must be said that everything they told you is a lie. And let's get into some of those today. You remember the TARP bailouts? $700 billion. Well, according to a Treasury spokeswoman, it's not based on any particular data point. We just wanted to choose a really large number. And that's, in itself, ridiculous. But when they audited the Fed, very limited audit, they found $16 trillion in bailouts. So they lied to you. The government said that they would use stimulus packages to get the economy going again. The Federal Reserve said they would print a certain amount of money. And yet both of them acted in a way that was untruthful to the American public. Income tax was meant to be temporary. This happens to be for Canada, but the same situation occurred in the U.S. Always told it's just temporary, it's just for a period of time, we just need to fix this, and then we will make it right. But here we are, a hundred years later, looking at this situation where we need to realize whatever they tell us, it's not true. 99% of the time, it's really not true. And this here is talking about that situation that occurred in the Soviet era. I don't want to get into the details of it all. But apparently, this embraced at least one in ten of Russia's citizens. Essentially, you had to keep your silence. If something happened to your friend because of a tattletale, and they would take him away, you'd have to remain silent when you saw these acts occurring because you knew it could be you next. That to me is very frightening. I've talked to somebody who their family had to deal with this. And it's exactly as I've read throughout books as well. You have to watch what you say. You have to watch what you do. Otherwise, you get put away. That's the take-home message for that. And what about the situation in Vietnam? Going in under a lie, under false pretenses. Does anyone else remember Tonkin? I'm sure you've read it for yourself. You know, you can search for these if you're not aware. But again, it was a lie. And what about this? I've covered it many times before. The consolidation of news, of information. There are six companies that own 90% of the media that the average people are looking at, are reading, are listening to. 90% of it. Six companies. And of course, they're all tied together. And as time goes on, there will be more of this um, collusion in between each other. 
And essentially, when you look at it at a deeper level, it's all one. But they make it seem that there's a left and right. They make it seem that there's a bias to one side or the other. But there is only truth or fiction. And I'm getting the sense that there are too many people out there that accept fiction as their version of truth. And it just doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. What about Snowden and the NSA? Everything that came out from there when they realized what what's going on behind the scenes. What are they doing to us? They told us this wasn't the case. And then it came out that it, in fact it was. They lied. Time and time again. And then we have this. If you've never heard of, of this, you definitely have to read up on it. Milgram. There were some studies that were done. Electroshock studies. And what they did essentially to summarize it, they had people who were partaking in an experiment. They signed up for it. They knew it was an experiment. And they had this dial and it would be able to adjust a different level of shock all the way from a mild one to a severe one and they were receiving an order from their superior to shock this person at a different level and so they would do it stronger 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 people were just writhing in pain just screaming and because they were receiving the order from their superior, they did it. More often than not, these people were doing it. People were complaining about their hearts. And of course, it, it was, uh, just to mention, it was uh, fiction in that the other person wasn't actually being shocked. The screams were pre-recorded and the other person just thought that it was real. And so... It tells us what people are willing to do when told to do so. They'll do anything. People were giving literally what they thought was a lethal dosage of this electric shock to people. All because they were told to in an experiment. So what happens if you're really pushed to the edge? Of course they'll do it. That's the power that government has. And then we have this. Um, it's hard to talk about this one, but um, plutonium was injected into people and uh, it was done against their will. Um It's uh, just to document what would happen. Uh, they ripped out a bunch of people's teeth. Um, just to uh, test to see uh, what happened. And um, they, you know, it, it seemed as uh, totally fine. I'll, I'll just move on. The uh, GMOs. Everybody knows what's happening with GMOs, and it is an absolute fact. In 19 studies, 19 studies, these mammals fed GMO, they had organ failure. In most cases, there were large quantities of organ failure, particularly liver and kidney. Now you tell me how many people have liver and kidney problems and then look at how many people have issues associated with 
that which comes after you have problems with your liver and kidneys. I mean, the list is endless, particularly with the kidneys. Okay? Eating the stuff that we are force-fed all the time. What about this? What about the number of babies that uh, don't make it every single year? Every single year. In the U.S. alone, 383 today alone. In the U.S. this year, 872,000. What about the Japanese Americans who were held captive in 1942? One minute everything's fine. Next minute, you're put away. For what? Because of your bloodline. Some people get put away because of their beliefs. Some people for dancing in the streets. And we trust. We put all of our trust. We put all of the power into the hands of the few. And we have this structure that exists above our heads that's able to dominate. Oftentimes, they use the democratic means to do so, where 51% of the people can override the rights of the remainder. Or, in certain cases, like Leon Panetta, they can just go over all of that, step on it, crush it. And we are the victims. And then there is the ultimate lie. One which some people still refuse to believe. To believe that we were lied to. There's a lot of people out there who are unwilling to look into any information at all. To me, what's important is the truth, whatever that is. I stand for the truth. I stand for freedom. I stand for liberty. Whenever there are criticisms of me, I always ask people to look into the truth. If you look in my books, you will find there is no about the author section. I was urged to do so by my editor on the first book, hounding me and pressuring me to do so. People need to know about you. And I said, no, they need to know the information. That's it. I don't want my name, I don't want my beliefs, I don't want my ideas and thoughts to affect the information. I only want people to know the truth, whatever it is. Thank you for listening.